If you ask the average citizen of the Federation what is the first thing they think of when you say Klingon food, I bet you darsex to tribbles the answer you will get will be gach. In fact, I would wager they would be hard-pressed to think of any other Klingon food. Maybe something Targ-related. But why is gach so well-known that even outside the Empire it is ubiquitous? More importantly, what is it about gach that makes it? So Gah, Klingon serpent worms. Although most Klingons prefer it live, it can also be served stewed or cold as a main course, side dish, or even a dessert. In fact, there's at least 51 different types of gah, each with its distinct taste and texture. These include Bethul, which has feet, Fildengach, which squirms, Meshtagach, which jumps, Torgud, which wiggles, and Wistan, which is packed in Targ's blood. Prepared gach ranges in color from browns to shades of maroon or even blue. But here is the question I get the most from non-Klingons. Why is gach so popular with Klingons, who are primarily seen as hunters? First, you have to understand that Klingons are not pure carnivores. True, we like meat. We like to hunt. It is a pillar of our culture and lore. However, we are as omnivorous as humans are. We do eat fruit and value fiber in our diet. There is a reason that prune juice is valued as a warrior's drink. Anyway, that's all for another show. Klingons have an advanced society comparable to humans in the early part of the 25th century. As such, we don't have to structure our diets around the migratory patterns of game and seasonal growth patterns of produce. We have replicators and protein sequencers, but our ancient ancestors didn't have these luxuries. What they did have is a need to store food in times of plenty for times of scarcity. Another option besides preservation is cultivating livestock to be available year-round as well as when traveling, like traveling off-world. No one knows for certain when gach was first consumed as a common foodstuff, nor when it became commonly cultivated, but most assume it was probably one of the first creatures domesticated on Kotnos, which is estimated to have occurred right around 24,400 BYK, before the year of Kalesh. As a result, food was less of a mortal concern. It is also a great way to make a meal go farther when you have unexpected company, and a cost-effective way to augment a holiday feast. At the time of this recording, in fact, we are preparing to celebrate Chitlop. So, Chitlop, Bot Ibjaj. So, you're getting ready to celebrate Chitlop, and you are deep in Federation space. You've run out of live gach, and you've gone through the ship's supplies, and you're down to energy rations on the replicators. Well, I'm going to show you how to prepare gach that won't be alive, but will be every bit as good as the stewed gach your mother made with the leftovers. When in Federation space, getting live gach smuggled across the neutral zone can be a challenge at the best of times. So we're going to have to use a few substitutions, most of which can be obtained at your local Asian food store. We'll start with fresh Japanese-style udon. You'll find them in the refrigerated aisle. They look something like this. We'll also use some dried udon, which tends to be a flatter, narrower noodle with a firmer texture. You'll find these in the aisle next to the buckwheat soba noodles, a darker noodle with a more umami flavor. I use all three. You decide what works best for you. Now we're going to need to boil these noodles, not only to prepare them, but to bring some authentic color. The white noodles take color really well, while the brown soba you just want to darken. However, they can all boil together just fine, you'll see. We're going to start with some soy sauce, which does bring some color, but more importantly, it brings the salt. But you don't want to overpower the dish with salt, so don't rely on it for coloring. We'll use a few drops of black food coloring, just a couple, three drops. It goes a long way. However, you can be a bit more liberal with the red food coloring. 
play with the ratios until you find the color consistency that works for you. Just remember there are over 50 varieties of gach and a whole range of colors, so you really can't go wrong. I like to go with two servings of the larger fresh udon and one serving each of the dry udon and soba noodles. Again, your chuk may vary and this is your dish. Go with the ratios you like, even all of one kind of noodle if you prefer. Also, you know how many warriors you need to feed, so increase or decrease the quantities as you see fit. Give your noodles a good stir and don't be afraid to work them throughout the boiling process. You want to loosen those fresh noodles as quickly and consistently as possible, though gently, not to break them. Otherwise, they'll absorb the color inconsistently and you'll have white streaks that don't look right. Essentially, this dish is an Asian stir-fry. The idea is fried rice just with noodles instead of rice. You can pretty much throw anything you want into the stir-fry, but I start with thinly sliced scallion onions. And yet, on our ship, we have one warrior who is allergic to onions, so I actually make her a completely separate dish of gach without the onions. Again, you know what you like, and you know your guests. Food allergies are not a joking matter, and in no way make for a soge. I have on occasion added some fresh cut matchstick style carrots, which bring a sweet, meaty flavor. But if you do that, you might want to get them boiling in the noodle water, probably even before you start the noodles, because carrots need to soften. In a frying pan, add a drizzle of oil and soy sauce start sweating your scallions. I like to use sesame oil because I, it just has that stir-fry flavor in my opinion, but you can use whatever kind you like. Different oils have different flavors. I didn't use enough oil myself. Again, experiment with your quantities. You're the chef and it's your dish. Make it so. So a bit more oil, because I know how much I'm going to be adding to this. There we go, and a bit more soy sauce. And you'll see that it's just now starting to, to, to bubble up along the edges. I kind of broke the cardinal rule here of stir fry. You really should wait until the, the pan is good and hot. Uh, you want it to be sizzling. That's part of the fry, right? But that's okay, we'll be just fine. That looks better. Now we're going to add our bean sprouts and I'm adding canned beans, bean sprouts. Normally I would use fresh, but uh, <laughs> I forgot that I had uh, purchased uh, fresh bean sprouts and uh, left them in the fridge and uh, they went bad. So that's why I always keep backup of, uh, of canned goods. Uh, not quite as good, but you know what? If I hadn't said anything, I don't think anyone would notice. As they cook, they're going to pick up that brown from the soy sauce, which is just what we want. And again, this is a stir fry. I compared this to fried rice, so I'm going to be using some fried rice seasoning. Um, I'm putting it into the, the onion and bean sprout mixture, and uh, I will add some more later when we bring the noodles in. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now we're going to bring in a couple of hen grenades. Yep, some would-be birds of prey. Crack those, drop them in. You can scramble them up if you want, but you know what? We're, we're doing just a fine job of that right now. Go ahead and agitate those. Keep those moving. You don't really want them to, to get into to too big a clumps. We want this kind of spread all, all over our, our mixture here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now let's go check on those noodles. We've drained those. We're going to go ahead and bring them together with the stir fry we've done so far. Okay, bring them, just dump them right in there and then get them moving as much as possible. You don't want them to, to crisp up. You just want to kind of get them all combined with the, the stir fry you've done so far. Okay, keep them moving, keep them moving. Man, that looks really good. That's a perfect color for gach. 
And then, as I promised earlier, we're going to bring another package of that fried rice seasoning, get that on those noodles, and uh, get that thoroughly mixed and coated, bringing all the flavor to them. And that's looking really, really good. Now, I felt that it looked a little dull, a little bit dry. This is entirely up to you. I decided that I was going to add just another little hit of oil uh, and mix that in. Gives it a nice shine, gives it that glistening appearance that, uh, that you kind of expect from Gach. Now we got our stir fry off the heat and we're going for pre presentation. I like to use uh, a clean wok. It looks great for presentation and it's functional because if you want to reheat it, you can just bring it back to, to the flame. Just going to go ahead and dump that in there. That looks pretty good. And fluff it. Yeah, you know, it, if, if it was moving, it would, it would be perfect. But I'd say that looks pretty much like gah. For serving, you can use pasta server like you see I'm using, or you can use tongs. I purchased these bowls at the Asian store. Um, you can see, yeah, maybe maybe the tongs aren't such a great idea. I would I would definitely go with the pasta server, and you know that looks pretty darn good. I think that would uh, I think that would uh, make any Klingon absolutely proud. And that's how you make gach. And now you are well armed for Kitlop or any other holiday. When allied warriors drop by unexpectedly or just your daily rations. Gach is a Klingon staple, even far from the Empire. And it is also a shoj. Until next time, chapla.